Good day, George. Hello, Bungo. How are you? I'm very well, how are you? I'm very well, thank you. I'm very well. Let me just get... This is my first Zoom meeting of 2021. <laughs> And there's a host, there's a host of them lined up, I imagine, starting on Wednesday. <laughs> yeah, there'll be a lot of them, I'm sure. But in any case, this is my first one. So I wasn't sure whether my system still works. No, it works perfectly fine. It works perfectly fine. Thank you very much, George, for, for coming on board. Sorry to disturb your weekend today, but thank you very much for sharing your time with us. We're hoping that this will be plus minus 30 minutes there around about. And the idea, I know I did not explain it to you um, on like outside an email. And sometimes an email can explain certain things or sometimes it can go over some. What's happening is that there's this YouTube channel that I have set up for this year. And the idea there is mainly just to have a platform that speaks to young people by a platform that speaks to young people. I'm looking at people between the ages of about 20 to 35 or so. And the idea is that there's a lot of these conversations that we are having as individuals, but yes, some platforms are having them, but we want to, in a way, kind of control the flow of how it happens. So that's where it's coming in. And this particular series that you will be featuring on is one that is called Men Who Inspire Me. And the idea there is that for a good reason, there's been a whole lot of backlash around um, men in our society in terms of availability, standing up and doing something and tied in particularly with the thing of um, gender-based violence and all that. So this came about with the idea of saying, there are men who are doing quite a lot of good. It's just that maybe that is not as highlighted as is the bed. And the, of course the bed needs to be highlighted so that maybe at some point it can stop. So this came um, from that type of a background with the idea of saying, can we focus on the, the good things that um, people are doing with the idea of bringing more attention to those kind of things. And particularly this one, I had, I titled it Men Who Inspire Me in the sense that these are individuals whom I've interacted with on different um, platforms and different levels, some for even longer an amount of time, some much shorter. But the idea is that in that interaction, however long or short it may have been, the certain things that um, it left behind that I thought someone else, if they were to have this exposure, they would benefit from. So uh, hence, I might pitch you there. And the idea around, I suppose, I, I'm not sure how present you are on Instagram. And the idea there of the stuff that I was mentioning was speaking to the fact that um, you are someone who is quite open to the use of tech, particularly when we're looking at people who um, lived longer than we have lived, who normally have a certain resistance to um, anything techy, and it's not just that type of age group, even people in my age group, there are people that do not even want to send a message on WhatsApp with that with that type of a resistance that says, I don't want to, it's like people are stealing my info, my data, and all those kind of things. So one of the things that I'd mentioned there was just that you are someone who is quite open, um, who seems quite open to adapting to the times that we're living in. So those are the things that I'd like us to speak to. Um, what sort of inspires you, like what motivates you to, to get up and go and do what you do. Um, it's speaking to things like some of your values that you, you, you live your life according to. So the idea, of course, I know I'm speaking a lot. The idea, I'm going to pass it over to you now. The idea is that someone who's watching on the other side, can pick up a set of, a, some lessons from the way that you will be talking about how you um, do your life. Of course, I know me and you have interacted much more within the, the workspace in terms of um, investments management. I'm not sure whether it may or will come up in that sense, but the focus is more on you, the person in this particular one. So that's in a nutshell trying to explain that. Yeah. Well, uh, Bonga, um... 
I would typically, I typically don't like to talk about me personally because usually it's superfluous to what uh, my role and my purpose is. Mm -hmm. But in this instance, I trust and respect you. And so I think it sounds like you are busy with a very good initiative. It is important to you. And if it's important to you, it's important to me. And I'll gladly support you where I can. Whenever I said to you in the past that uh, whenever you need my support, talk to me. Well, this is one of those. It wasn't something I expected, but it doesn't Thank matter. <laughs> That's perfect. So uh, by all you. means, I'm in your hands. Cool, cool. Thank you very much. Um, I think perhaps let's, let's touch on the first one that I've already mentioned around your your openness to the use of tech, be it from a work point of view and even some of the other things that may be, we don't need to go into detail in terms of how you use it in your own personal life, but just your openness to tech when so many other people across different age groups come across as so resistant. What sort of like made you or gave you that impression as to say, this is something that is here and is gonna be here for quite some time. I have to go back a long way to, uh, to explain you that influence. Uh, and in fact, I can put a date to it. Uh, it was June 1982. Oh um, where Six years before I was born, by the way. <laughs> I was uh, in the middle of high school and we were one week away from uh, a very important uh, sports final match. And whilst playing with my friends outside, I twisted my ankle and tore my ligaments in my ankle. And so six days before one of the most important matches of our lives, this was an absolute nightmare. Mm -hmm. And so when we arrived at the specialist uh, and we explained to him, listen, I have to play <laughs> an important match in six days time. He was laughing at me, he says, no way. And we said, we have to. He says, well, there's one way. You'll have to sit with that foot in the air for five days, keep it above your hip. Um, and so my father used the opportunity because I was now trapped for five days at home. And he went out and he bought a Apple computer. And at that stage, it was something brand new. It still had a floppy disk drive and it had this DOS prompt these are words that you guys have probably, when, you, when you've when you heard them, <laughs> it's only in history classes, but in any case. And so I used that opportunity. My parents worked from home. They were estate agents. And uh, I was an only child. And essentially, I always helped them working in the office. And so I used that time and I created a database for them on this computer system of all the homes that they had listed. And it entirely changed the way that they interacted with people from there on. People would come in, we look for X, Y, Z in a house, and we just punch it into the computer and all the houses that qualify spit out. Now, that sounds stupid today, but in 1982, that was quite a thing. Also, um, it, it changed the way in which we created uh, marketing material for selling houses. Uh, we put the accounting system for the whole business onto the computer within the next couple of months. And so by early 1983, I was already running essentially accounting, marketing, database functions for my parents' business uh, from home and immediately understood the power that, uh, that this tool could add to any process. It never replaces it, it makes it better, it augments it. Mm -hmm. um, and so I was an early adopter and I've always stuck, got stuck into technology. And uh, I think if, uh, if me personally had to follow a different career, it would have been in the technology area. So that's where it comes from. Thank you, thank you. And I must, I must say, just for if any, for those people who may be watching, um, just from interacting with you in the work in the workplace, like I mentioned earlier on, when we've dealt with senior people, the idea is normally that we're looking for as little an amount of change as is possible. Keep it going the same it has been going, but it's totally been a different experience um, being around you in that sense, in that sense, that sometimes I feel like I am backward myself because the pace of change that we're dealing with tends to be um, quite, um, quite pacey. And so- it's I'd, like to, 
I'd like to add something to that um, because if you think about it in a in a in an enormous macro sense of way, why did dinosaurs die out? Because they couldn't uh, handle change, and so I consider change as one of the root things that you require to grow. You can't grow without change. Uh, growth implies change. Growth is change. So you can't grow without change. And in our world, uh, if you don't grow in some way or another, mostly intellectually or as a person, whatever, if you don't grow, you stagnate, you stagnate, you go backwards relative to the rest of the world. You have to keep on growing. You have to accept change. Change is a great thing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. No, thank you. Uh, I think let's move on to the other one there that I've got in terms of where you draw your inspiration. Like, are there any individuals perhaps that you kind of look up to or certain experiences that have um, impacted you, even from a professional point of view, perhaps if you were to keep it within that circle, that more like your inspiration or sources of inspiration is? Yeah, hmm. this might sound horrible, but... Um... You know, there's many people that play an influence in your life as, as you grow up. Some of them you physically know, and some of them you actually just read about or, 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 or know about or hear about or whatever. Mm -hmm. But I don't have a direct relationship like that. I do not have a mentor or somebody that I look up to in the markets or emulate. I'll, I'll take this back to you to another question that, that you that you often get asked in a conversation like this and that's when you say to me uh what's the advice you would give to yourself if you were 20 years old if you had the opportunity to do that mm -hmm. so i want to link that to this question you asked me just now okay. because my answer to that is that you have to believe in yourself you can't model yourself on somebody else you have different abilities. Every single person has di different IQ, EQ, uh, fears, strengths, weaknesses. And that is that makeup is you. And it's only that entity that can make you grow and make you successful through time, whatever your definition of success is. Mm -hmm. But if you base it on somebody else and then, uh, and then you feel fearful, how are you going to solve it if you are just a stamp or a copy or a replica of somebody else. So I firmly believe that you have to understand yourself very well. And then once you do, you must believe in that because it's all you've got. And so now you ask me who it is that I look up to. Obviously, we read the stuff about the people who went ahead of us. Mm -hmm. And so I can tell you, I read the first Market Wizards book, um, Jack Schwager's Market Wizards. And that must have been in the 90s. And that was a huge influence to me on me as a I was a trader at the time. So names like Ed Saikota and um, uh, Mr. Druckenmiller. I mean, they were enormous, uh, you know, images that I had out there of successful people in the financial industry. So those would be the first two names that come that comes to mind. And then obviously I had some other personal people who were also involved in the financial markets who played more or less a role in my, in my, in my own life and, uh, and education in the markets. Wow, thank you. I, li I, like, I like the take that you, you give the, the one of believing in yourself. Because like you say, too many of us, when we look, because we feel, or at least let me put it from my own perspective, you somehow tend to think that you still have this like 60 years that you are still to leave. And at this point, you're looking up to people that have gone ahead, which is good in certain instances when you're picking up some of the good stuff. But some, sometimes, yes, like you say, we tend to pretty much want to have their blueprint of their life imposed on everything that we are, which, like you say, sometimes may not work exactly because it suppresses some yeah, form of individuality. There's a quote, Bonga, I can't uh, do it verbatim right now, but it's that it's better to be a, a, uh, a weaker original than to be a perfect replica. Uh, and that is and that is absolutely so true. The second thing is I want to add to this conversation is that in essence I 
considered my, my life and my career, and let's take specifically my career, I kind of considered it of 15 years of learning, 15 years of doing, and 15 years of teaching. Um, and that's kind of how, you know, I saw my, my career grow. So you go through different phases. My point there is there's a definite time where you must stop striving to try and learn more. You must gain experience. You must become a specialist in whatever it is that you choose to do in life. But you do that by 10,000 hours of doing it. Mm -hmm. You don't get that just by reading from books. Nobody's ever learned to drive a car by reading a book. Uh, after that, you have to go and drive the car. And so you have to learn from doing. And that is where you need to trust yourself and to learn your, uh, learn your own abilities and, and what you can and what you can't do, what you're good at, what you're bad at. And, that's, and that flows into my next subject, which is my passion for diversity. And uh, yeah, I'm not talking in a, in a political context. I'm talking about a team of people. Because there are certain things that I am better than you at, personal, professional, whatever it may be. Mm -hmm. But there are quite a few things that you are better than I'm at. And that's exactly why the two of us together and the six of us and the 16 of us together are better as a unit than any one individual superstar. Mm -hmm. But it takes respect for two people to be able to interact in a way that we can take the best from each other. And that is that unique team dynamic, which you can't, uh, which you can't just implant into something. It gets built over time. Uh, yeah. Then that's a separate conversation altogether. Uh, <laughs> so sorry I interrupted you. No, 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 no problem. Um, the other one that I think this is the second last thing, the time that we've got, but I'm remaining, is around what other people will call time management. Um, and someone corrected me to say that. It's actually not time management, it's actually management of self in view of the limited time that you've got. So I want to ask a question along those lines now to say, um, how do you go about um, doing that? And perhaps if you can touch on it, how it has transitioned over time, particularly in your work life as well, if there's been any change um, in terms of how you've gone about um, doing that. Yeah, Bonga, different times in one's career. I'm now in the 33rd year of my career. And during different times in your career, there's different requirements from both work and life. Uh, and sometimes they arrive at the same time, which is <laughs> which is quite stressful. It's not perfect that it, that it hands one over to the other. So the work-life balance, balance remains a challenge throughout your life. Uh, for me... It's pretty easy, I must say, now, because, well, we don't have any kids left at home. Uh, they're all adults. Mm -hmm. And so it's just my wife and I, which makes it really easy. The work from home environment has been heaven on earth for me, because now I don't have to waste a moment on getting dressed pretty and sitting in traffic. I literally walk out of the show and I'm in my, and I'm in my study a minute later. And I mean, it's absolutely spectacular. So... But that's the, the small things. The big things are that I don't consider work and life as two different entities with a door in between. Mm -hmm. um, our work, what we do as investments, means that we must be in touch with the world. We must have a decision-making framework which is based on the realities of what's happening out there in the world. So every single thing that I do when I go outside of my house, when I do, when I do life, mm -hmm. uh, to me... Uh, serves as inputs into that decision-making framework. So I'm never switched off that I don't work. But, you know, uh, there's, no, there's no stress between life and work for me. I enjoy both. You have commitments in both. I can't mm -hmm. miss the strategy meeting, but I can't miss my wife's birthday. So, you know, it's, it's, uh, those are the givens in life. But for the rest of it, it's kind of easier. But it is easy for me to say that now in this time of my life, earlier on in my career, I didn't always manage that well. And I think we all battle with that. Um, but I think the most important lesson for me is not to see them as That's two right. distinct entities, that they are in fact interlinked. Uh, your personal life is super important because only as a whole healthy 
person, do you deliver good job output? But your job is also important because your growth within your career uh, determines your own sense of your own success and who you are. And those things are absolutely linked. So, uh, you know, I think uh, when the pressure is on in whichever side of it, um, you must just bunk it down and do it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much, Rich. I think um, we've touched on quite a number of, of things. Some of those questions that I had put down here, we've touched on some of them even in person, but I'll have that as sufficient for now. And perhaps the last or the parting um, sort of question from my side, and having spoken about the audience that is um, watching in this particular instance, that is people within that age group, say your 20s to 30, they, and even pushing it to 35 sometimes. We're looking now at skills that people can be looking to, 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 to delve themselves into with the idea of reading themselves. I don't know whether the terms I'm using will apply in that sense, but reading themselves for the future in a way, in terms of the change, be it in tech, be it in the, in the, in the line of work that we, we, we do, or even the way that we do work given the the increase of the share in terms of working from home now. So the question is more along the lines of what sort of skills, even if it's just say the top two that you view as um, the things that you'd recommend someone um, who is say either starting out or even in their early stage to kind of be looking to focus on. Of course, this is quite open-ended. Indeed. So you'd say I'm boring because I'm going to give you the same answer where we started this conversation. Um, you have to be adept at technology, plain and simple. But that doesn't mean you have to be a programmer. It means that you have to understand two things about technology. How you can use it in your life as a tool to improve whatever else it is that you do. That's the first and the easy part. The second part is the impact of technology on our world. That's the tougher part. And to answer your question, the skills that are required are not those first ones. I mean, you can learn programming or you can learn to use a specific application to a very good extent, uh, but that's not what I'm talking about. That's part of the course. What I'm talking about is how life has changed in the sense that in the past, if I had to face criticism, I would have seen the person on the other side. The person would face me. It would usually be the school principal or a teacher or a parent or an older sibling or a family member or maybe a good friend. So you wouldn't face criticism regularly mm -hmm. and you would deal with it in different ways. Now, with things like social media, you put something out there, you are open for criticism and you get 200 negative comments coming back in a second. How does your psychology, how does your mind handle that? And unfortunately, those old values don't transpose well into this world. So that's an example that I'm citing. So the skills that are required is the, is the skills to adapt to the new technology-enhanced information world that we live in. You have to be able to discern between what is noise and what's real. And I'm not only talking about uh, uh, fake news, but there are so much information out there that um, uh, you have to be able to distill between what's important to you. Otherwise, you would just sit there the whole day and read and get analysis paralysis, and you'll never make a decision. And so that ability to still reach logical conclusions and make good logical decisions without just going to ask Google remains so important because I find young people today, if they can't ask Google, they've lost the ability to find a reasonable answer on their own by asking questions to whatever source, not Google. <laughs> okay. Um, that remains a super important skill. So uh, it is a world with technology, the adaptability. We spoke about it earlier, to be mm -hmm. able to handle change. Change happens much more rapidly now than it did before, and it's actually accelerated. And, you know, uh, uh, and, and without change, then you're going to get left behind. So we, we did say that earlier. So to me, it's that ability to remain logic, to remain 
Homo sapiens is still the most magnificent creature on the planet for its cognitive ability. <laughs> but we're losing that if you just transpose that into your computer and only ask Google for whatever you should do. You must still have that ability. So play chess, take risks, uh, do a sport, um, learn emotional, uh, your EQ, must, must be developed, not only your IQ. It's fine mm -hmm. if you get your CFA in one year, magnificent, do all three years in one year, you're super mm -hmm. brilliant. But you might end up being a nerd that can't work in a team, you that you're not self-driven, you don't have good work ethic. Uh, that person's not necessarily gonna be a winner. Not mm -hmm. all geniuses will be winners. It'll be people with good work ethic who can run a project on their own. Uh, in this new world, I, <laughs> I can only trust people that can do their work on their own with a bunch of technology that they use as tools. So I think it is those skills to, to work on your own, uh, to be driven, to, be make, to make logical decisions and to be able to handle team dynamics and criticism as constructive inputs into your life and not cringe up in a ball and you know, just stop working. In other words, what I'm saying is you're gonna learn to be tough in a technology enabled uh, information overload world. You have to be tough. There has to be a resilience to be able to handle that. You probably get that from the other spheres of your life, your spiritual life, your personal life, um, your, your physical life. You know, you probably get that strength from somewhere in there. I always like to say that your life is a circle that consists of your intellectual world, your emotional world, your spiritual world, your physical world, and they all need to be in balance. If any one of them are out of balance, uh, your, your, the wheel of your life is not going to turn smoothly. Mm -hmm. oh, I have certainly, we have certainly enjoyed um, this conversation and I hope anyone who may be watching it is also picking up on some of the things that I have picked up on. And with that, I'd like to thank you for your time, um, George. It's been, it's been a pleasure. And I'm sure there may be questions that may come up, which we will interact with on our own as well, unless, of course, they specifically are tied to any of the things that perhaps you specifically mentioned from your perspective. But I truly appreciate you taking your time, and we've come to the end. Thank you. Great pleasure, Bonga. Thank you very much for the opportunity. Thank you very much.